Welcome to another installment of Citizens Bank Live and Local. I am your host. My name is Will Daly. And if you've missed any of our past Citizens Bank Live and Local, I am sorry. I don't know what happened. We sent you a letter. We sent you carrier pigeons. We tried to ring you and text you and everything. And um, I feel bad for you because we've had Livingston Taylor, Kay Hanley, Dalton and the Sheriff, Still Gold, Chris Trapper. And tonight we have a very special guest to help close out this segment of the series. And I'll get to that in a minute. But I want to tell you, in case this is your first time here, what Citizens Bank Live and Local is. Um, what we are doing here is having intimate interviews with artists who have made the Boston music scene special. And they hail from here, or they have roots here, and they have stories to tell. And why is that important to tell stories? Well, as you know, we are on a long pause from concerts, and that's affecting all of us in various ways. But most importantly, it's affecting the workers, the people who help us get those concerts going every night. The staff, the sound engineers, the lighting engineers, the security. And what Live Nation has done, and what Citizens Bank is helping us do here, is they have created a fund called Crew Nation. And Crew Nation to this date has raised $15 million and helped 15,000 crew members around the world during this difficult time. So while you're watching tonight, you're gonna see a text number pop up on the screen. It'll pop up like this, watch this. Boom, it'll be right there. And it's gonna say, text CB Live to seven, oh, look at that. I got it to work, 707070. And you can make a donation that way with your phone while you're watching. And when you donate, it goes to the Crew Nation Fund. It's hosted by Crossroad Presents and Citizens Bank tonight. But here's what's special. When you help someone else, you're helping yourself because Citizens Bank is matching you from $25 all the way up to $125 with club cash. What is club cash? Club cash is money that you can spend in our bright future when we get through this moment, because we're going to, and you are in the Paradise Rock Club again. You're in Brighton Music Hall, you're in the Orpheum Theater. You will have club cash to spend and they will match you. So you do $25 tonight to Crew Nation, Citizens Bank is matching that with club cash for that bright future when you're standing in front of the stage, you're getting blasted by amps and you're just at peace. So that's what we're doing here. I'll remind you as we go, we've raised $2,000 so far. We're gonna try to get the 2,500 bucks tonight. So tonight, my guest is, he's a musician, but um, he's also a baseball player, a World Series ring wearer. He is a friend. We shared time on stage playing guitar. We've talked guitars. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life who has multiple skills as a broadcaster and um, a guitarist. And he's always kind of inspiring me with the riffs that he's learning when I watch him on his Instagram page. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on Lenny DiNardo. If he's there, Lenny, I'm here. How you doing? Hey, Will. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. You're too kind, man. Nice You're way too kind. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, man. That's that's uh, that's, that means a lot to me hearing that from you. And uh, you know, well, I, I work you. with I work with one of the best in the biz at Nesson, Tom Karen. And uh, I'll tell you what, introduction, I could feel the amps, I could feel the vibrations of the music in my face. I can't wait to actually get back to a concert when the time comes. I know. And, well, thanks uh, for doing this because it means a lot. And, it, um, and what I love about it is as we're talking, if people want to text and donate, they are not only helping other people, but they're planning their future back in that thing that is so essential not just everyone's jobs and careers in the business, but to being human, which um, I think you know so well from being uh, having all these experiences, which is rare for someone to have stood on a mound of a major league ballpark and thrown to you know the best hitters in the world 
and also been on stage with some of the best players in the world. But so my first question for you, what is more nerve wracking? <laughs> Standing on the mound, facing down someone that you're just like, this guy is on fire right now or being on stage with like Eddie Vedder or Evan Dando? Being on stage with anybody is way more nerve wracking than pitching to A-Rod, Jeter, Vladimir Guerrero. I don't care who you name. Being on stage for me is just one of the most um, nerve wracking, anxiety ridden experiences I've ever I've ever uh, taken part in. And yet I keep coming back because I love it so much. I love music. I love playing. Uh, I, I'm kind of a hack. But it's it's like rock and roll fantasy camp being able to be on stage with guys such as yourself, Eddie, Evan, Juliana Hatfield, all people that I've had the the, the pleasure of, of playing with, Bill Janovitz, Ed Velasquez, uh, Mike, Mike Jen, just a bunch of musicians that have uh, kind of uh, taken me under their wing ever since I was with the Red Sox starting in 04. It's uh, it's been a real thrill to kind of you know learn from them and and, and let them be help me be a part of uh of what they do it, it really is a lot of fun so what and what propels you though to, i i because i know what you mean i remember like i still have uh nerves and everything we're playing like I, I love the nerves and i love um kind of riding it like a wave but i also kind of you need to keep um re-upping them for me i need like i love when something goes wrong now in a show because it's op an opportunity to to have a new moment with people in the audience and to show them the realism of, of what's going on and the authenticity. Almost like maybe it, it feels really good to strike out the side, but it's probably a little extra exciting when the bases are loaded and you're brought in to strike out one player and you get everyone out of the jam. Um, what compelled you to keep going and keep pushing yourself on stage with music? Well, you know, when, when I was a rookie, Mike Timlin, who's a, who was a veteran back in 2004, took me under his wing and he said, you know what, if you don't have the nerves, if you don't have the butterflies, when you're when you're warming up on the mound with the first couple pitches of that inning, you know what, it's time to hang up your cleats. And uh, I know exactly what he meant because I was a nervous wreck almost every time out there. But after a couple pitches, you get your feet under you, you realize that, you know, this is the same uh, distance between home plate and, and the pitching rubber that you've been using since high school. Um, and, and, and you thrive on it because you know what, you know that you belong there. And, uh, it took a little bit of time, but I, I took that to heart, but on stage, it's a completely different animal for me. I know exactly what you're going through on, on, on stage because I went through it on the, at Fenway on the mound. But when I'm on stage, I'm, I'm a deer in the headlights. 90% of the time I've got the chords written on my hand somewhere right here, just in case I lose track of where we are. I kind of look down and see exactly how to come back into the fold. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very, very similar because, you know, you're in the pocket right there. You know exactly where you are. You know you, where you want to be at a certain point. It's the same thing on the mound. You have a goal and it's, uh, it's baby steps to get to, get, to, get to that, that goal, which is to get out of the inning as cleanly as possible and you're going through a song and you're making you're, you're, you're giving the fans a wonderful experience which is kind of you know what you want to do at Fenway Park you're an entertainer and you want to make it as clean as possible you don't want to walk the the first hitter you don't want to walk anybody with two outs get in and get out that's the ultimate goal <laughs> <laughs> I've been there I've been there when I'm on I've been on stage with you and I've cheated off your cheat sheet a couple times like I was I, there's some of the gigs that we do so so for anybody watching, what Len and I are talking about when we're on stage together is Hot Stove Cool Music. And Hot Stove Cool Music is a ch an annual charity concert that was started by Peter Gammons and Theo Epstein around two, the year 2000. Two, I mean, no, 2000. Yeah. I think it was 2000. Yeah, 2000 I think right? my, my first one was 2005, January of 2005. Yeah, but it was around since 2000, oh. I want to say. Oh, you've been doing it longer than I have. But um, yeah, I think I got it on like 2012 or 13. I can't remember. But uh, so it's just this massive party, but we're raising funds for the, Gam the Peter Gammon Scholarship Fund. Peter Gammon's one of the most wonderful people you you'll ever meet. I mean, one of my best times ever at a baseball game um, is just sitting. I think um, 
it was it the the ni- the eighteen season when the Red Sox won the World Series last? I can't remember. There's been so many World yeah, Series. Yeah, yeah, the last okay. one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that play that playoff versus the Yankees, I sat with Peter, and it was the most beautiful experience. Just having him chirp in your ear because he doesn't talk about stats. He doesn't talk about what's about to happen or what's happening. He talks about the person that's at the at the plate or the mound. And yeah. he gives you insight to who they are as a person when they're up there. Imagine it's sitting at a booth with Bob Dylan at a show, at a quality show. That's sitting with Peter Gammons at Fenway Park. I mean, in a nutshell. I, 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 I felt like the luckiest person. It felt like I have this rare baseball moment. I remember having grabbed two then and to this day of sitting there and having that experience with him and watching this wasn't, you know, not a regular season game. It was a playoff game. It was the Red Sox with the Yankees. And it was just um, moving and poetic. And also it's kind of missing in baseball now and everything's so al- algorithmically driven, just like it is in music. It's like, that's what's so beautiful about Peter has both in baseball germ- journalism, but with Hot Stove Cool Music and what we built there and what we're all missing now is that we're on stage for Hot Stove Cool Music, raising money for his scholarship fund, raising money for um, programs in Boston and Chicago. The foundation to be named just, later. The foundation to be named later. But we're Adios, just baby. a bunch of people and um, artists sharing space, having fun, making a mess, you know, being uh, somewhat imperfect and wild and having these experiences and sharing them with Eddie Vedder and Liz Fair um, and Buddy Guy. Uh, and so cool. it's, it's and, and uh, I gotta say, really I gotta say you got to you gotta give yourself a little bit of credit because you know when you're on stage, you're playing with everybody, and you've got this, and, and and only you know deep cut music fans will get this, but you've got that Robbie Robertson thing on stage from the Last Waltz. Oh. You know what I mean? You kind of <laughs> you got that thing where you're like. Now, where we are, you're running the show because I mean, you can tell you've been there for some years, and uh, and you're 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 in the mix with everybody. You've done your homework, and it shows. Well, that that means the world. That's a great that's a great thing. I'm humbled by that. Um, and it, it really is. Where it's an all star rock concert at the Paradise in Boston, at the Metro in Chicago. Paradise every year, and um, we have the best players and. I started doing my own tunes when I was there, but then you realize there's a 12 piece band. Let me like pull up some deep cuts. But then once in a while, the night would be going and all of a sudden be like, Will, you're supposed to be on stage. And it's in the chaos of the night. And I was like, oh, what, what song is that? I have no idea. Cause I already, in my head, maybe I already did my three songs that I was singing. Oh, you're playing guitar in this tune. I'm like, oh, okay, I grab a guitar. I run out, I get on stage next to you and you have that sheet. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I just start cheating off you, but um, it's- uh, yeah, well, the last- Cheat that I had was for uh, "Come On Eileen" Dexy's Midnight. <laughs> you know the song. That was it's it. like just that was random it. chords, random chords, and I had no idea where I was going, but I had it right here, I had it written right here. And someone called me out. I'm walking yeah. around the crowd prior to playing, and someone says, "Is that chords written on your hand? You're ch- you're cheating." <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm just trying to get through. I'm just trying to get through the night here when I'm messing yeah. up too bad. <laughs> oh man, we've had so many beautiful nights. I mean. So real quick, I want, I want to stay, I want to be able to stay on this hot stove thing because there's so many things I want to ask you that'll, I think, call back to that. Um, one of them is like playing with you and playing with Bernie Williams, who center fielder for the Yankees, who is just the most wonderful person, but so annoying to have so many World Series rings and be this phenomenal, phenomenal guitar player. So, you know, I'm, well, I'm pals with Bernie now. I play with him all the time. And I just think, well, this isn't fair. You have a second life as a guitarist. I don't get a second life as a ball player now. Like, I can't go get in the major leagues unless unless I find out maybe that I can. I do the Tom, Tom Brady diet and I get in there. But Hey, we can help. Uh, Bernie I can Williams. help you. <laughs> okay. Bernie Williams is amazing. And, uh, well, I did that once. So my band and I would play wiffle ball on tour all the time, right? And so one time with Kevin Euclid, was like, I'm the best wiffle ball player. I have like a sidearm, wiffle ball, riser, sinker, everything. I believe Tried it. Tried to pitch to Kevin Euclid, <laughs> nothing. Just embarrassing. And this is what happened to me. That's why I didn't do sp- – I, I loved baseball, but I couldn't, I couldn't hit a ball to save my life. Was, I just couldn't do it. Thankfully, I had the guitar. 
Um, well, I'll take but, that. um, that's, that's, that's a great, uh, you know, reference. You playing wiffle ball with Kevin Euclidus is very, very similar to me playing on stage with Eddie Vedder, right? It's a, it's a great time. You're pinching yourself. But at the end of the day, it's it's a lot of fun. And it's just, you know, take take from it what you will. It's like rock and roll fantasy right. camp. That's what I get out of it. And, uh, you know, it, it, to, yeah. to Bernie Williams, Bernie Williams is the third guy I faced in the big leagues. My, my first outing in the big leagues was old Yankee Stadium. And he was the but third you, batter. You, you I got on the side. What's that? You struck out the side, right? No, I, I, I faced Gary Sheffield. I grounded him out to Bellhorn at third. I struck out Matsui, and I got uh, Bernie Williams to ground out the, to Bellhorn at third as well. So it was a clean inning for my first outing. And I, I remind that, him every time I see him. I tell him, hey, I met him every hot stove that he's played. And I, I remind him every time. He's like, remember that, 04? <laughs> oh, dude, that's amazing. That's, that's an amazing – I, so I, I guess, and similarly, I remember the first time we played with Veteran in 2015 in Chicago. Guy comes in. This is like my childhood hero. You know, this is my 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 older brother of, of music. Um, and I remember being. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna build with Eddie Vedder. All is well. I'm at sound check, fly on the wall, watching him sound check. And he says, hey, he says in the mic, does anybody know Wish List? Yeah, and I think I remember thinking. I think he's asking everyone watching him right now. And at the time, I was hanging out with a guy named Al Cooper. Do you know Al Cooper? Not Alice Cooper, but Al Cooper. Al Cooper he's like the, the four player for Dylan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. the Forrest Gump of rock and roll. He produced Freebird. Like he started Blood, Sweat, Freebird, and Tears. Like a Rolling Stone. Yeah, Al Cooper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Al Cooper. Played on Like a Rolling Stone, all this stuff. So Al Cooper at that time was kind of like my Mr. Miyagi. He, I would go to his house for lunch. He lives in Somerville. Somerville. What? And he told me in one of our, I, I would go there and I'd play my new songs and he would just, you know, tear them apart and be like, paint the fence and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll, he's like, you need to use this kind of chord here instead. I'm like, all right, I'll go, I'll go do that. And, um, and so he said, I went to the, like a Rolling Stones session to play guitar. But Mike Bloomfield, who was the best blues guitar player around in the United States at the time, showed up too. So he's like, I was done. It was over for me. My, my opportunity was, was flying out the window. And then Dylan said, does anybody know how to play B3? And Al Cooper just said, I do, but he never played B3 before. And so he's in there. They're running takes of Like a Rolling Stone. And Cooper comes up with that lick. And they go back into the control room to listen to it. And... Bob Dylan's like, turn that, turn that lick up. That's the hook for the song. So Al Cooper just said, he was at the time saying, Will, whatever you do, just say yes. Just go for it. Whatever, whatever it is, even if you don't know how to do it, you have to say yes and show up. And so Vedder says, Does anybody know wish list? And I, before he finished the sentence, I had grabbed my guitar. I have it right here. And walked up on stage. And he loved the guitar. It was this uh you know, you know, I love Dennis Faino, the, the builder. Absolutely. And it was the Absolutely. pink, sun sunburnt guitar. And I walked up and immediately was like, what kind of guitar is that? And so we started talking. And next thing I know, I'm playing five. I just met the guy five minutes earlier. And I'm in his set for the rest of the night for five songs. Um, which, which was easier than you know, actually hanging out with someone that you looked up to, you're, you're kind of in the, you're on the field, you're on the mound and you're doing your thing, what you've worked on your whole life. Um, it's more like hanging out afterwards. That was a little more stressful and oh, what do I say now? But playing music well, on stage was the easy part. Very, very similar story, but kind of on that parallel with music and baseball. 2006, David Wells is one of our starters, right? And, uh, Yep. I'm a bullpen guy. I think I had one previous start to that in the, the previous year, 2005. I had one start, all bullpen stuff other than that. And and he's starting and, and he takes a line drive to the knee and comes limping into the clubhouse. He's got one guy on either side. And he looks right at me like he knew what he says. Heck of a day to quit sniffing glue. It's probably all yours, man. And I end up taking five of his starts just to kind of until he could get back. To, to nurturing that knee where you can actually go down, you know, it's all about kind of just waiting in the wings and, and knowing that opportunity will will arise. And then once it does, kind of taking it, 
you know, and I end up taking five mm-hmm. starts, kind of filling that gap from from David Wells, Mr. Perfect Game, right? So just incredible. I love the parallels. <laughs> I, and and it really is like people talk about music and same with sports. I mean, ta- what happened? What would happen if uh, Drew Bledsoe didn't get hurt? What would happen if you know um, the guy from Mother Love Bone didn't pass away? You know, all these things timing and circumstances and opportunities as they come to us in all facets of life, art and sports, um, which has, yeah. which is an art of itself, just art with stats. Um, but it is really fascinating to me this much into a career in music, how timing and luck are just as important as talent and perseverance. Sure. Um, but the more you persevere, the more luck you have. And you persevered. So you've played, I mean, you played all over the world. You played for Italy. Do you yeah, speak Italian? I, I know the words that my dad spoke every time he stubbed his toe on the on the the, <laughs> the table growing up. My my grand my great grandfather came from Italy, uh, nineteen eleven or so, and basically he was of the mind that okay, we came to the United States. Where, you know, it's English. You know, a lot of people when they came from the old world, they did that. Okay, no more no more Italian. We're speaking English and. Uh, I, I wish that I knew some Italian other than those bad words, but I was, I was fortunate enough to play for team Italy during the world baseball classic back in 06 and 09. And uh, it was fun. Played with uh, Mike Piazza, Frank Catalanato, uh, Jason Greeley. Uh, ended up playing with uh, Mike Piazza in Oakland later on in my career as well. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, and, and team USA never called. So I was, uh, that was the next best thing. <laughs> That's amazing, man. And you got to play in, you played in Taiwan. You played in, do you play in Japan? I, I went to the opening series in, in Japan playing for Oakland. And I actually went to Japan when I was in college playing for Team USA, the collegiate national team. And uh, in Taiwan later on in my career, I want to say that was 2012, kind of, you know, on the downturn when you're just about done. Mm-hmm. I went to Taiwan to play the season. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. The The food uh, didn't agree with me in a, in, a, in a few different instances. But other than that, the baseball was great. There wasn't a lot of long balls, but they played great fundamental baseball, really quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bunted, which you don't see very much of these days. Wow. It's a lot of, it's a lot of hitting, for the, hitting for the fences rather than kind of playing, playing actual baseball. But it was fun. I had a, you know, my career was, let's see, I was drafted in 2001. I retired in 2013. And uh, I wouldn't change anything. It was a lot of fun. I got to play ball for a living for a number of years. And and uh, I'm still able to walk and, and pick up my arm. So it's a positive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're also, what I love is you, you're part of the, the Boston Red Sox kind of family now. And a voice of it and face of it on Nesson. Um, but I just, I kind of, I know you from, I mean, I know you from the game, from watching it. But I, I'm friends with you from music and being on stage and us freaking out about whoever we're hanging with and playing with. Um, what do you have? Like, do you have a rock concert poster collection behind you? My whole, I'm in my den right now in my house and we bought this house last year. We ended up moving to Rhode Island five years ago with two kids and we've got four now. So we needed to upgrade to a a different location with a little bit more room. And my whole den, I wish you could see it. It's all basically sports, typically baseball and music themed, uh, stuff. So (laughs) if you can see this right here, this is me playing with, the man himself, Peter Gammons, wow. at a uh, event for our dear friend, Nesson cameraman, John Martin, may he rest in peace. He passed away from ALS mm. a couple years ago. Uh, that was an event for him. And uh, Warren Spahn, Sandy Koufax, I got a Telly Savalas record here, which is kind of from my, my childhood. Every time Telly would come on TV, my dad would say, who loves your baby? So I ended up getting a record. Uh, yeah, uh, David yeah. Bromberg poster. I got Eddie over here. You can't see it, but I got an Eddie Vedder poster. Um, yeah, so all over my walls, it's basically sports or or mainly music. I want to say there's probably a, a 70% music uh, uh, posters on my wall other than, other than baseball. But I do have some basketball stuff back here. I've got some Satch Sanders cards who uh, I played mm-hmm. around their golf. Uh, I want to say last year, year and a half ago, just the kindest man who was with the Celtics back in the early 60s, all the way to the early 70s. And uh, 
just had a, an unbelievable time riding around in a golf cart with this guy for like four hours. Just and uh, you know what? Next week, man, I'm gonna look for some Sad Sanders cards because he was such an incredible dude. Uh, I've got a Tom House card here because he was kind of the uh, one of the main figures that that teaches pitching or taught pitching when I was a younger. Still does. And uh, I thought that was a funny card of his because uh, he's got a permanent because it was the 80s. He's got a perm. Uh, the Red Sox. Right? Wait, a lot so, of the 80s. So you're a, you, you are a collector. You are a collector. I've got, got some stuff. i got Gary Bell here who pitched for the Sox back in the 60s, who was a fantasy camp counterpart. Who's, uh, but it like seems like day. everything everything you, has, you have tells a story, right? Almost Absolutely. on your wall. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. for instance, Joshua Marks is uh, – we used to terrify – me and my older brother used to terrify my youngest brother. He's 13 years younger than me. He used to terrify Groucho Marx or hit my brother with Groucho Marx. Like, we would take Groucho, the marionette, and put him under his co- on my brother's covers. And, like, he would <laughs> he'd go to sleep under the covers, and Groucho would be there, and he would just, you know – it's probably mean, but I mean, when you're <laughs> when you're no, older you brother, to, you're not proud of, I guess. But <laughs> it's necessary. I have I have thing one thing single with mask with my sisters with Reagan mask. That's, that's a good way to scare people. Masks in general. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. My 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 single baseball card collection. My single baseball collection thing. Because I got rid of one. I was like on a pinch once. I sold all my baseball cards when they're not even worth anything anymore, but I have a whole scrapbook dedicated to, are you ready? Yeah. Don Mattingly. Of course. Why not? Don's of awesome. Course, but I'm a Boston kid. I couldn't tell anybody. I got, I got, you know, paper cutouts, giant pictures, Don Mattingly. I was, I was my favorite player is a Yankee and I lived in Boston. And I, that's the one thing I kept from my whole collection. Cause I had a Mickey Mantle card that was stolen, but, um, uh. So That's other than that, I'm just guitars. I'm just guitars uh, you know, and everything. Baseball, Don, Donnie Baseball is a guy who transcends transcends cities. I think he's got he's like a Jeter. Yeah. You know, if you're a Red Sox fan, you got to give respect to Jeter. Donnie Donnie Baseball is the same way. I think he played the game the right way. He's got respect of everybody. You know what I mean? But also, as a kid who loved rock and roll, he had the long hair and told you know always fought with George Steinbrenner and, you know, told him I'm not cutting my hair. And I was like, Oh, that's the best, you know, that's, that's, so that's the guy cool. I want to dig. But, um, so, all right. When I'm watching you on Instagram and everything, it seems like every week you're working on a new riff. And it's the one it yeah. kind of makes me feel like I need, you always make me feel like I need to work harder at the guitar because you're always working something out and you have this great, just little feed of all these, licks but you're not you're not learning like stay away to heaven you're not learning you know uh alive or anything like that you are doing deep cuts all the time and reminding me of songs and sometimes i have to look up the songs what is your process for figuring out guitar riffs well i tell you what i uh i think i'm I'm just a deep cut kind of guy honestly i rarely listen to the radio honestly it's it's more Mm of uh my 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 history of music Originally came from my folks, right? Beatles, Stones, Who, Loving Spoonful, uh, Grateful Dead, all the way to any, you know, the Blues guys, Mississippi John Hurt, you know, uh, you know Reverend Gary Davis, Yorma Kalkin and Jefferson Airplane, all those guys. And then, you know, when you have an older brother, he's the guy that you kind of take his taste, right? So in the 80s, he he was kind of into the Duran Duran thing. And then all the all of a sudden Bon Jovi and then Guns N' Roses. And then all of a sudden the Lemonheads and Pixies came around late 80s, early 90s. And that really stuck to me as, uh, as stuff that, that I really enjoyed listening to. The Lemonheads, the Pixies. So you're going to find a lot of Lemonhead stuff on my uh, my feed. Although you will find Stairway to Heaven. I had to put that in there. It's deep. It's in my Instagram there somewhere. I, I did do that. But, you know, I, I love the alt rock bands. Um, I don't think REM is necessarily alt rock, but I love REM. I love the the bands like the Lemonheads, the Pixies. I like I love Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins. That was kind of my my uh, Blind Melon. That was my stuff growing up when I was coming of age, and uh, I just kind of stuck with that. I, I never really got into the the deep, you know, the things that were that were on the radio at the time. I don't. That's just me. I don't know. Did you ever I don't, I don't know. Deep. 
Well, I mean, that's what I that's what I love about the feet is like the, all those lemon head riffs that you cover and the one you sent me the other day. Like I'd never heard that song. And um, Cup. Yeah. And do you did you ever meet Danny Clinch, the rock photographer? Um, I think no. he's been at maybe one or two hot stoves. I you saw him play harmonica. I saw him play harmonica with Pearl Jam at Fenway, but I never had a chance That's to right. meet him. Yeah. Um, and he uh, he he just made a blind melon documentary. I know. I ordered it. I haven't gotten it yet. You I'm did? waiting on it. I'm, I'm waiting on it to come. Can't wait. All I can you got to tell me how it is. Because that was that was kind of a fascinating band, and that guy had a fascinating voice. He had something really player. special. Yeah. It you was know, so uh, short lived. Really short lived. That that first album that came out was great. It was very uh had a 60s, 70s, like a Zeppelin tone to it. And then the one that came out right after that soup, I mean, they recorded it in Louisiana, and you can absolutely tell that they were immersed in the culture of Louisiana because of the horns and and just the type of music that they were playing that they they took from the city and brought into their album. It's uh right. really, really cool. The, the ambition the of that record. The ambition of that record, Soup, is the one that kind of makes me sad that there wasn't any more because if they were doing that on their second record, what would they have done on further records? But um, Absolutely. But yeah, I, I love that. I had the same experience. I had a stepbrother who was about seven years older than me and uh, his music and Van Halen, Metallica and stuff like that. And then the 90s rock thing that happened became mine more than his and stuff like that but um is so it is so essential to have that kind of person a cousin or an older sibling who just bestows you this grace of a perfect band like rem like you're just, like what is that are they an alt rock band what are they they're just what a perfect catalog and vision of yeah. of a band that's one of the that's what i love that we get to do with hot stove cool music at the at the paradise every year which if you want to plan don't forget if you're watching this or you're watching this later you can text the text is going to come up right here it's going to say cb live text cb live to 707070 and when you donate tonight to help crew nation and everyone who's out of work from no concerts you also any uh, up to 25 25 dollars all the way up to 125 dollars get to invest and your future concert experiences at places like the Paradise, where hot soul cool music happens every year, and what we, what I love about what we get to do there, are the nights and the, the years where we say, all right, on night one we're going to cover REM all night, and we just have 40, 50 musicians learning all these REM tunes, and we've done Tom Petty and Bill Janovitz and Mike Gent do Rolling Stones almost every year now, which. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know if that's the tradition that we do, but um, that uh, did you you were on that REM year? Yeah, right? I did the REM year. The I did one of the Stones years, I think. But it, it's funny mm -hmm. with with REM. I, I mentioned that my brother in the mid early mid eighties was kind of he's six years older than me, so similar to you, he was into Duran Duran. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, every morning getting up to school. He, uh, New Moon on Monday would come up. That was like his wake up song from R.E.M. Not R.E.M., from uh, Duran Duran. And one day my dad comes home with an R.E.M. LP. Like, hey, just just slip, you know, put this on the turntable. Check this out. And it was uh, it was all over from there. I mean, just uh, that yeah. introduction, especially that mid-80s R.E.M. stuff was just uh, incredible. And, uh, Absolutely. I, uh, I had a chance to meet Mike Mike Mills. Uh, I met the whole band back in 04, but Mike and I actually watched a baseball game, a spring training game, probably five or six years ago. And uh, we're talking baseball and this and that. And, and we get on the topic of uh, pitchers and and how, you know, most, I would say 90 percent of baseball pitchers are doctoring the baseball some way or another. The pine tar or uh, L.A. looks in their hair or bullfrog lotion in their arm. They're doing something to the baseball to make it either spin or slip or slide or do something and. And lo and behold, the next day I find out he writes a song called Stuff, and uh, he's going to use it on his his baseball project album. He's in a band with Steve Wynn from the Dream Syndicate, Scott McCoy yeah. from the Young Fresh Fellows. Uh, Minus five, right? yeah. 
I've exactly. So I think it's going to be on their next album. It's called Stuff. But I mean, those are those guys are just Linda Pittman, who's uh, who's married to Steve. She played with uh, Freddie yeah. Johnson, who's I'm a big fan of. But yeah, so yeah. they're all huge. <laughs> we got to get yeah. them at Hot Stove. It's, it's, am- it's amazing. And uh, there's that. Have you? There's a documentary being made right now about the relationship between music and baseball. And the guys are from Chicago. And Gerald no. Dowd, who plays drums. You know, Gerald, he's in the hot stove kind of from, from Chicago. He's in the musician yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the producers of it. And um, yeah, if these guys haven't talked to you, you got to sit down and talk with them about their documentary. It's been put on ice because of COVID, like everything else, and sure. exactly why we're doing this here together. But um, all right. So the other thing about all your guitar playing is your guitar collection is insane is it insane it's, it's insane but it's it's we, cheaper than we need cars. An intervention right now it's yeah. che- it is cheaper than cars cheaper than cars and you know i'm on a uh a program now where if i want to get another guitar i don't just buy another guitar i have to sell one i know a lot of people that that like guitars are on that that program so i don't just buy guitars i have to sell a guitar in order to buy one because you know mm-hmm. it, it can get out of control but uh, I've got some pretty yeah. cool guitars. Um, you want to see a couple? Yeah, I do. But wait, what's the one? What's the model that you have a lot of? That what's the Maiden. brand? Maiden. M A T O N. Write it down. Now yeah, you're seriously. the only person I know who has these. I got. That, I found so out about history. them through you. There's so much history that people just don't really realize about Maiden guitars. Um, like Keith Richard played a Maiden guitar on Gimme Shelter. That was a, that was a Maiden guitar. Um, the Kinks, you really got me? Da-da. Mm-hmm. That, that, that was a Maiden. That, that, that mm-hmm. whole riff was a Maiden guitar. Um, I think that was a, a Supreme 777. Might have been a, might have been a 545. But anyways, George Harrison had a Maiden back in 63 that he used. Um, I've got the model. I'm not the, the exact one, but I've got the model. That's one of the ones that I got. Um, uh, I brought one here to the show today that Neil Finn actually uses. It's a 12 string what? model. It's called a Firebird. I love a Firebird. Neil Finn so much. This is Neil Let Finn. The first part of the comedies, I saw Neil Finn. He's got a red one. But, oh yeah. Uh, so this, yeah, he's got a red Firebird. It's a 12 string. Um, and I'm lucky enough to kind of be this care, the caretaker of this, this guitar for the time being. Um, I played a six string version of this with Eddie on stage a few years ago at hot stove, a white one, a white firebird. It's called a 650 Maiden firebird. And didn't I, I think I borrowed that from you that night. You're like, yeah, just be careful the, with it. <laughs> you borrowed the red one, the Capri 151. It was a hollow body. It's kind of like a Gretsch country gentleman type. Yeah, yeah, type yeah. Guitar. Yeah, I've got footage. I don't know if you have pictures of that. I can send you some photos. You actually jam. They're a little you blurry. You always, you always show up with something special every year, and I and I love it. But uh, don't don't get rid of that twelve string, man. I'm always thinking if I'm recording records in Boston, I need to call Lenny because I I don't I love guitars, but when I look for a guitar, I I, I don't know I don't or try not to know anything about the pickups or any of the wood. Sure. I need to hold the guitar. And if I feel like there's songs in it and there's life in it for me, then I want the yeah. guitar. Um, I'm, you looking, can, I'm only you looking for can songs. Raid my den. Yeah. Come raid my den anything you want, honestly, because I've got and that, probably 20 that, no guitars that you're welcome to anytime you're recording. And and, and these that, are, you know, I think they're all local Australian native woods that they make. Australian blackwood and, and and just really cool guitars, super super quality, and not a lot of people know about them, um, mm-hmm. but just amazing amazing guitars. I think this one's from, from sixty five or sixty six, so it, it's it's, I mean it's I love the vintage. It's got nicks in it and checks in the the lacquer. Right. I love that. Well, I love that. Um, it's good that you have yourself on a program now, and you're not just yeah. recklessly. On, do you go to reverb.com? I do. I do. Yeah. I, I, I go to Dang reverb now just to kind of roll, but I have used reverb to buy and sell. Um, it's it's a great little, you know, little app 
you know, to kind of get people, uh, you know, if you're looking for something, if they don't have it on Reverb, good luck, you know, because it's it's so, worldwide. And, so, you know, my favorite maker in the world is, is Dennis Faino. I don't know if it's going to be back. Absolutely. No. So Dennis Faino. Speaking of drool. Uh, speaking of what? Speaking of drool, trust me, I'm following their Instagram page and I'm always like liking this, liking that. I love the I love their guitars. I don't have any. Unfortunately, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all the time. Such a cool shape. Love it. Well, yeah, he, he, um, so he made me this in 2008 and that's when he was still making them in his basement, uh, in Philadelphia. And he sold when they got really big and popular, he sold his company to a worldwide distributor and immediately regretted it. And then. I remember calling them and saying, Hey, I'm a Fano artist and I want to do an order for guitar. And they said, I'm like, I want the, this kind of wood or something like that, that I would uh, dream up these guitars with Dennis. And they said, Oh, we don't use that wood anymore. Oh, we don't do that special thing. And there's no custom orders. It turns out Dennis left the company of his own name and then started Novo, which is the one that's blowing up now. And so, a few years back, he made me my first Novo, which is, these are just ridiculous. And I only have the one Fano, and now I just covet these these Novo guitars. And Novo, that's the them. site that I follow on Instagram. That's, that's the site that I follow. I, I check those out every time yeah. I, I can get. It's uh, incredible. Look and these that. things come to me with, just there's this, there's a dozen people there it's not on some conveyor belt or anything. It has hands on it. It doesn't come to you perfect and all shiny. It's nicked up and lived in. Um, yeah. And they're they're just astounding pieces of art. And I feel like when I get it, there's songs in it. Um, and he and he recently we've been we've been pals for so long. And it's like he's like I'm like make make the craziest guitar for me that you ever have. And this is what I got. This is what I got back. Wow. Former, so cool. former Paisley, now gold. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. Did you use yeah. that on the new the new album on the on the Prince song? You had to. Um, on the Prince song, on the on the covers EP, I probably used um the black Fano. Uh, but this okay. one, uh, the blue one especially is all over golden walker like um that song okay. he better be alive is is uh is the, the blue note blue no novo that's my favorite song on the album yeah as you know i've, I've mentioned that a few times too and you, you actually gave me a, a little a little lesson backstage lesson that i recorded i still need to play that that's going to be in my instagram feed at some point when i get it down <laughs> yeah man that's, that that was, thank you and and you that's right down right down the middle for Donardo, where it's like that's the b-side you know that's the deep cut that we really i remember um that song was really rocking when i first played it with a band it was fast and it was kind of punky and then we were making the record and one night i was like you know what i set up my amps in a weird way and went into the live room and just cut that song in one take uh the guitar parts and then went and sang it and there's there's a lot of guitar on it secretly, but it's not that much stuff. And it's just my drummer yeah. on the ride delicately the whole time. And it just, it was a last minute add on in the ninth inning, if you will. And uh, yeah. so I'm glad it made it's the a record. It's a travesty that, that song isn't on the radio. That's why I don't listen to the radio. Because if that was on the radio, I would be tuning in. You know what I mean? I, I would be... I would be tuning into the radio if I if I was turning the dial and that was on, I would stop right there. You know what I mean? Thank you. So would I. Oh, yeah. So would I. <laughs> there is a music video. But, uh, so so we're away from concerts. That um are you feeling that? Do you feel that missing from your life? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we did the we did the hot stove virtually. We did the good work, which we, we did our best, but there's uh you're missing that personal touch, unfortunately, that uh, that that camaraderie that we typically get when we do hot stove. I miss seeing everybody. I miss playing on stage. Uh, I miss hearing live live music in general. And uh, it's it's a great uh, substitute to be able to have it online. 
whether it be Facebook Live or, or, or you know, anything really. Uh, it's great to have that, but there's nothing that substitutes uh, actually being at a concert and having that, that ringing in your ears for three days afterwards. You know, it's, uh, it's a great feeling for me. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we get back sooner than later. But uh, in the meantime, I, uh, I know you're doing your part to kind of uh, to keep the music out there and uh, to keep us entertained and, and, uh, and, and still releasing stuff. In the middle of uh, the pandemic, yeah. you're releasing great music. I love it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm just, my friend a couple of months ago said, you know, I think, I think you're treading water too much. You got to just keep swimming like you're like you always do. Cause if you tread water, you exhaust yourself for that inevitable wave that comes out of nowhere and, and takes you under. So just keep swimming and keep going. So I think that's what we're all doing. That's what we're doing here tonight. I can't thank you enough for doing this. Sure. Um, we are helping those who are out of work from this long pause from concerts if you text cb live to 707070 to donate citizens bank is also matching you when you do 25 dollars or more in club cash so you can spend it at paradise rock club by now if, if you're a facebook friend of mine can you please write on my this tonight i want to know I've got over a thousand. I don't know how many I have. I've got a lot of Facebook friends. If you donate to this tonight, please let me know on my feed. I want to know which one of my friends actually donate tonight so I can personally thank you. Okay. Yeah. Let's that hold our be friends funny. accountable. Yeah. Um, and this is our, this is our sixth one, man. And, uh, and it's been going great. Citizens Bank Crossroad Presents have brought this to us all and, and brought us together. We've had, we had Kay Hanley on here. We had uh, Livingston Taylor. That was a beautiful one. Um, and you can watch them all at the Crossroad Presents YouTube page or Facebook page. Um, and this will stay up. So people, you can share this onto your Facebook page and we can keep this going. Text line will stay open. Um, so I want to thank you again, man. And we got to do a hang. Hang with the families and just talk guitars and trade riffs. What riff are you, what riff are you working on right now? Um... Gosh, I, I was learning that song that I sent you. I sent you a video yesterday or the day before. It was the old Lemonhead song from the late 80s called Mallow Cup. And uh, yeah. the, the the intro to that song, for me, it's, it's pretty difficult. There's a lot going on with the bass line and the, uh, the, the lead line. You're kind of doing it all. Um, but I cut it down. I think I put it, I actually put it on Instagram today. And uh, the, the cool thing about guitar, and one of the things I like is you can – play a riff today that you just learned put the guitar down and pick it up tomorrow and then it's just a little easier on that on that day and then you put it down you pick it up the next day and it's right there it's just a little bit easier for me at least that's that's how it works oh, I, stay, same for me still to this day it, and i love that feeling and then anyone i'm talking to or anyone i'm doing lessons with i'm always saying at the very least play five minutes a day um that's the one thing where in moments like we've we've been in for a while now, where our stress stress and anxiety is so high, when it hits its peak, this light bulb goes off. And it's like, oh wait, I can go play guitar. <laughs> you know, when anything becomes too much, it's just like I can sit there and play guitar and play music, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, well, that's why I do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, dude. thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. We got to do it in person when we're able. And uh, we I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll play live soon. Absolutely. And thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone who's going to watch. Thanks to everyone who texted and donated tonight. Um, thanks to Citizens Bank, Crossword Presents, all the other artists. People have watched every week. We will have these up. You can still watch them. Maybe we'll come back and do some more. But once again, everybody, Lenny DiNardo, musician, baseball player broadcaster on Nesson. Good night, everyone.